Hey, my fellow art nerds, since we are getting into anatomy here on the channel, I thought it would be a good idea for me to highlight my favorite anatomy reference for artists. And that book is Human Anatomy for Artists, The Elements of Form by Elliot Goldfinger. Now, I want to give you a heads up right off the bat. This is kind of a pricey book, and I just want to acknowledge that because it's no joke to spend money on a book, right? But I have to say that there is good reason for this book to warrant that price. And I just think hands down, it is the only anatomy reference that you need as an artist. I have tons of anatomy books. I have some that are aimed all at artists, some that really consist of figure drawings talking about anatomy, everything over to Gray's Anatomy and other atlases of human anatomy that are really aimed more at physicians. But of all of those books, in my opinion, this one is the most inclusive and the most helpful to artists learning in a whole variety of ways. So let's take a look inside this book and I will show you exactly why this is my favorite anatomy reference for artists. So here's the cover and you'll see it's a little shiny. There's a little bit of glare, but once we get into the book, that should take care of itself. So this is what the cover looks like. I'm going to show you the table of contents so that you can get a feel for it before we get into it. Okay, so here is that table of contents, and what you're gonna find is they start with the skeleton. So that's great, get your foundation first, right? But then there are also two other sections after this before you really get into like the muscle anatomy. So there's discussion of the joints and discussion of muscle actions at the joints. So we're gonna take a look at that so you can see what kind of information is there. But I think that's really important because just kind of like memorizing some bones and then the muscles on top doesn't necessarily help you when you have figures in all kinds of different poses and understanding what's happening. So I think it's really great that all that information is included. Then you've got the muscles with the structure, function, and form. Keep that in mind because this part of it, the way that this is broken down into structure, function, and form, I think is really helpful. And then everything is kind of divided by the section of the body. The facial muscles, expressions, head and neck, trunk, shoulders, upper arm, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of go section by section through the figure. Then there are different surface structures. So this is stuff that's not exactly like bone and muscle anatomy, but understanding the eyes, skin folds, breasts, all those sorts of things. And then there are other sections on proportion and different ways to think about the figure like looking at the figure through a series of blocks or cones and things like that, right? So you've got that for the figure, the head, and the hand. Now, I'm going to let you know right off the bat that I find this section, which is the largest on the muscles, the most significant here. Like, I think all of these other ideas are great, but when we get to the section on the individual muscles, you're going to see exactly why this to me is hands down the best. So I'm just gonna kind of skip through a little bit these first sections. You've got your typical, you know, skeleton layouts. You have the head and then notice that there are all these different abstract kind of designs and shapes for the head. We're gonna come back to that. And here, here we start to get a good example of what I love about this book. We have an illustration over here, one from the back, one from the side, and one from the front of the spine. So you can literally look and see all these details of the vertebrae. And you can even see, you know, there are marks to separate the cervical, the thoracic, the lumbar region, all of that. There's tons of technical information. So if you wanna know everything about the different numbers of vertebrae and how things change. You want all those scientific details, you have them, but you can also skip that and look at the illustrations, right? So I feel like it's really aimed at artists because there's a lot of visual information if you're just not gonna go through and read like medical style information. And then here's something that I really love. 
there's this like abstract breakdown of things. So rather than just showing you a realistic thing and expecting you to go from there, there is this series here, right? So we've got um, this line that is just showing the overall curve from the side of the spine so that you can think of the neck curving anteriorly, the thoracic region curving posteriorly or toward the back, the lumbar again curving forward towards the front of the body, and then in the sacral area, that curve going back. So it's just a simple line, but there's so much information in there for those of us who are drawing the figure. And then it shows you how you can take that line and really make it into the essence of the spine without necessarily needing to memorize all of the different vertebrae and the order that they go in or anything like that. So that is built right up until you have, you know, the head on top, ligaments attached, and there's an overall abstract idea of the spine being more narrow at the top, wider at the base, and then a triangle for the sacrum. So really important, like abstract ways of looking at things. Let's also take a look at this stylized vertebra, right? So I think this is great that it's just super stylized and broken down in a simple way. So you have the body, just the main part of that vertebra. There's this arch, a spinous process, and a transverse process. So, I mean, any I think anybody can kind of look at this and understand like, okay, there's a circle with a loop and like three flags off of it. So I actually brought over my actual vertebrae here so that we can take a look at it. And obviously this is not exactly the same thing as this drawing, but that's not what's important here. What's important is that this really complex form with all these different angles on it has been broken down into something really abstract that is understandable and that can lead to better drawings, even more so than just sitting down and doing a drawing of this vertebra. Understanding the structure in the form is so important. So keep a look for that throughout this book and you're going to see how over and over again these abstract ideas are brought into the book and that really helps with the understanding. Again, beautiful illustrations of the ribs and then abstract versions of the ribs and this continues for everything. So I'm not going to stop and go through all of these. I really want to because I just love to geek out on anatomy. It is pretty much my favorite thing. But yes, every single bone, you get a realistic illustration. You get more information than you probably want. And you get abstract versions that are easy to understand. Keep flipping through. Look at all these different views of the foot, right? You get the outside view, the inside view, top, underneath, front, back. You know, just everything here is included. So much good stuff to study. Then we start to get into the joints. And there's a lot of information included about the ways that the joints move. So there's discussion of the different types of movements because all of the different joints can be classified into different types and how they work. And there are illustrations to show you what happens at the different joints. And pretty much all of the joints, including the shoulder, which is just so complex, are gone through so that you can understand what's happening when people shrug or when people push a shoulder forward or raise an arm. Really amazing stuff in here. And then we get to the section that discusses the muscles at the joints. There are a lot of words in here. And if you're like me, like I tend to look at books first and then read later. So I'm not going to sit down and read this book cover to cover, but I use it more like a reference. So I look at the illustrations and then when I'm really diving into something or I know that I have trouble understanding a certain like section or a certain muscle, then I start to dive into the verbiage. And although it looks like a lot, you know, and there are a lot of names in here that can be intimidating, like tendinous intersections and aponeurosis. I always say that wrong. But even though that there are all these like technical terms in here, the way that it's written is really down to earth. 
So if you can kind of go slow and don't get intimidated by the Latin that you're seeing in here, it's really quite understandable. So now we're getting into the sections on the muscles and wonderfully there is a discussion of all these different muscle types where the fibers run parallel, uh, fusiform, all these different like ways that they tend to come together so that you can look out for them. And there are stylized ideas of what you're going to be seeing in terms of the cross sections and you see some pictures, right? So there's an image here of a leg which is relaxed and then a leg which is tensed. So you're kind of being primed for what you're going to be seeing in this section about muscles. Of course, there are some overall images. There are all different kinds of things going on with the face. So if you want to understand better what is happening with the musculature in the face, depending on like the emotions and the expressions, all of that is included in here. And again, this is pretty in depth. It's not just like one page with, you know, a surprised person and a sad person. They're really going into all of the different things that happen within these expressions. Pages and pages and pages of faces here. And then we get to the pages of expressions at the end. Got the head and neck muscles. And again, everything is pointed out. Everything is in great detail. And you're starting to see now what all of the musculature pages look like where you have an illustration, you have cross sections, you have symbolic representations, and you have photographic references. It's pretty much anything that an artist could want, any way that an artist could learn, you're going to find all of that here. So I'm gonna stop here because this is just a muscle that I really love, the sternomastoid. Let's take a look using the sternomastoid as an example so that you can see all that is included in here just for one muscle. Starting at the beginning, they show you the origin and insertion points on the skeleton. So they don't just have an illustration of the muscle and then point to it. For each individual muscle, even down to the most minuscule muscles that you see only for a second on the figure, there is the insertion point and there are the origin points and they're outlined in orange so that you can see right on the skeleton where they are. You have that from a side view and from a front view. And of course, if applicable, you'll get a back view as well so that you can see all those different angles of what's happening. Then you see the muscle in isolation so that you can see only that muscle and you're not mixing it up with any other muscles next to it. And you see just by itself, where it goes and their abbreviations for different sections of muscles. Then you see what it looks like all together with all the other muscles around it. So you know if it's being overlapped, if it's overlapping other things, you might realize, oh, there's another muscle parallel that I need to watch out for. And then you see an image of a person where that muscle is tense and you can see it really well. So really clearly there, you can see that muscle. And then of course, the same thing repeats down here. So that in the front view, you see the origin and insertion, the muscle all by itself on the skeleton, the muscle with all the surrounding muscles, and then what it looks like on a person. Your abbreviations are right underneath. So it's easy to just look and see what something stands for. Then over here, you have cross sections which is pretty complicated, but when you're starting to get into it, it is so helpful to be able to see where it's really overlapping in three dimensions with the other muscles. This is also super helpful when we start to get to larger forms like the chest overall, like seeing the cross section of the whole chest and the back or the cross section of an arm or a leg to understand you know, that it's not just circular, there are different forms in there, super helpful. Then you have the breakdown of the muscle as an abstract form, which again is really helpful so that you can look at the big overall shape that you should be thinking about, but not getting too much into the details, right? And then of course, if there's anything that you're confused about, 
there's all kinds of information here about the origin, insertion, action, so that you're understanding what that muscle does. And understanding what it does is going to tell you when you're going to see it. And then there's discussion of the structure. So is this a muscle that has more roundness at one point? Is it kind of a flat muscle? It talks about when you're going to see it and what it's going to look like. So lots of really great information in here in the text. You can see the cross sections going through the ribs and finding out where all of these erector muscles on the spine land. Lots of abstract diagrams. I love these kind of progressions where you can start off with a simple shape for the latissimus dorsi, just, you know, a triangle, and then give it a little bit of curve so it's a little more realistic. Understand a section of it is tendon down here, a section is tendon there, and then there's that little twist at the end going up to the humerus and an idea of where the pelvis is. So just really great, simple ways to understand these muscles. Now I love that here they're not using the same picture over and over again. They're really making sure that they get the model into a pose where you are seeing exactly where the muscle that they're talking about is. Even on the back, like even though we don't really see the serratus here because it's underneath the scapula, they're making sure that we understand where the scapula is and where it's originating there. Now, I just want to point out here, um, this is a page about the long head of the triceps. So yes, everything gets broken way, way down, not just the triceps overall, but each individual head of the triceps gets its own you know, moment to be the star. And so we're able to see one section at a time and then it being put all together. We see the muscles here being tensed. And this is where these cross sections really start to be helpful because then you realize how much the triceps really takes up on the entire arm. So you can see that the front of the arm at the biceps is more narrow and the back of the arm at the triceps is wider. And then you start to understand, rather than the arm just being a round circle, it's kind of like this bean lumpy shape where it's narrow in the front and wide in the back. Now I'm gonna skip, there are just many, many pages here, but I just wanna show you really quick the sections that are in the back. They're starting to talk about the facial features. Each feature gets its own page, how fat pads work, so there's a discussion of that and then charts of all of these fat pads. Ideas about the skin, skin folds, breasts and genitals, veins. I mean, they really get into everything. Nothing is left out in this book. Proportion, all kinds of abstract mass ways to think about the figure. With all of these different options, you must find something that works for you in here. And finally, a bibliography. And there's the back of the book. And back to the front. So hey, you all, thank you for taking a moment to look at this book with me. Human Anatomy for Artists, The Elements of Form by Elliot Goldfinger. Again, it is a pricey book, but the reason that I love it so much is I don't think that there's any bit of information that you need about figure drawing that you're not going to find in here. This is like, if you're old enough to remember, it's like the Encyclopedia Britannica for artists of the human anatomy, all in one smaller book, not a series of volumes. I love it because you get any way that you might be learning. You get literal illustrations. You get to see the origins and insertions on the bones. You get to see the isolated muscle, what it looks like with all of its neighboring muscles around it. You get to see images of people with those muscles being used and tensed and abstract ideas of how to sketch and draw and just basically understand these things in simple forms. So although I do think you probably need a more gradual introduction to anatomy, if you haven't really studied anatomy before, 
all of this information can be really overwhelming, especially the way that it gets into like really small muscles that you almost never see. But for that, you can find my anatomy instruction here on YouTube. You can find my anatomy course. I'll leave a link below and just basically get started in some other way with your initial approaches for how to study anatomy and some of the major muscles, but have this on hand so that if there's anything that you don't understand or you want to go deeper and understand more about the musculature, or if you're doing a drawing and you're like, huh, there's an indentation here and I have no idea what it is. Go look in this book and you're going to find the answer to your question. I hope you've enjoyed this book review and peek inside of Human Anatomy for Artists. If there are other books that you would like for me to review, just leave a comment down below and I will be sure to check that book out. Thanks so much and happy drawing!